Ferme des Roches is in um, a part of France, which is well loved by many people, which is Normandy. And this little corner is the Cotentin. And the Cotentin is a little peninsula that um, sticks out into the sea towards the Channel Islands. And therefore it has um, the Gulf Stream, which flows around its edges, which gives it an absolutely incredible microclimate. So, shh, don't, share, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, I love nature and um, I do really like having people in the garden to share it with me. It's, um, it's actually become essential to me. But I think, um, I think there's a part of me that really likes, you know, just being alone with my plants, horses, dog. I think I'm a bit of a, in France they call it a savage, but in England we don't call it a savage, we call it a, a hermit. So I, I think I'm one of those. I think I caught the malady, the sickness, the illness of um, the bulimia of plants, all, all on my own. I think I managed to catch it alone. Um, just, I don't know how it happens to you. You just see plants and you start planting them and uh, then you want more and that's it. You get a passion for plants because there are just so many. You could never ever in your life see all the plants that exist on the planet, never. And here I've got plants from Japan, I've got plants from the high mountains of the Himalaya, I've got plants from Siberia, I've got plants from America, plants from, uh, probably plants from Europe, English plants, I've got, you know, the whole of the United Nations, the whole of the, the G20, they're all here planted in my garden. And they all live in the same small space. I probably got about maybe an acre planted, possibly. And they all live together. They all cohabit kindly with each other, if I help them a little bit. And it's, it's just spectacular. And it's, um, it's a, a feast for the eyes. It's just so satisfying. Nature is so generous. There are so many extraordinary plants. It's, and, you, and you discover one and you want it. You've got to have it. And then you plant it. And then you try to plant things around it. I think the garden has become an extension of me. I think I'm an intrinsic part of this garden. I know that when when I'm not here anymore, the garden won't be either. Because if you stop looking after a garden, it, it disappears. And the garden just lasts as long as the person who gardened it. And so I know that um, I am as important to this garden as it is to me. We are completely symbiotic. We're, we're one. You know, the garden and I are absolutely one solid feature and um, I need it desperately. It's, uh, it's what makes me feel like a, like a person. And um, I, I don't count the hours I spend in it. And um, I have to count the pennies sometimes. I have to restrict my appalling addiction for plants from time to time. But uh, I think that without the garden, I, I don't know who I would be. It's, um, it's the definition of me, that's for sure. I think when people think of me, they think of the garden. There's horses as well, as well of course. Horses is so important. And actually, they're, they're very much an intrinsic part of the garden because at my feet you can see um, manure. And every day I go with my wheelbarrow around the fields and I collect the, all of the manure with my hands, with gloves, and I throw it directly onto the plants. And most plants, 99% of the plants, love it. Gertrude Jekyll once said, a garden should never be too big for its gardener. You know, when is the garden too big? Because you grow it, you grow it, it, it just gets bigger and bigger, and it's all, you know, because you buy a plant, and you just walk around, and there's just nowhere to put it. So you, you have to, and luckily I can, I can expand my garden. 
I love this place, absolutely, passionately. It's an insatiable passion. Just this, um, this wonderful place. I'm so lucky to be here. I feel very blessed to have found this extraordinary place and to be part of it. <laughs>